Greetings, true believers. It is I, Matt Hall, joined by Andrew Jordan Hill, Andrew Taylor, and we went to the local barcade. That's right. We went there for quite a while. We played every single game, and we're going to share it with you. We have a breakdown of each cabinet in there, and we give a little background. We have a little fun, some quips. We tasted a tasty burger. Do you remember that burger? I do remember the burger. It was really good. This is going to be really good. (laughs) We're sitting here like this because we forgot to record an intro for this video about the barcade. Please forgive us. in here. <laughs> yeah. It's a player one. There they are. Timber Who are you Wolves. Trying to be? Really? Timber Wolves. I loved Wolves when I was a kid. I didn't watch basketball. <laughs> I, I barely watched basketball. I just, I just really liked the Bulls because they were exciting. Mm-hmm. I should have liked Michael Jordan more because of my name, but I did not. NBA Jam was released by Midway in 1993. This game built on the foundation laid down by 1989's arch rivals. In 1994, a new version of the cabinet dropped, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. This version presented new features, new Easter eggs, new music, and an updated roster. An early test version of the cabinet included some secret characters like Raiden, Reptile, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero from the Mortal Kombat series. These were eventually removed from most versions of NBA Jam TE, but a lot of other hidden characters still remain, and most of them are people who worked on the game. Oh, good for three. Oh, Oh, you lost by two. So close. Mm -hmm. Very well. I accept defeat. Got going. Put in four, and then... How do I how do I jump in? So there's there's four slots. Oh Jesus Christ! I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm just a dummy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that one working? So I would go for the ones that are lit up. Okay. Actually, was that the bad quarter again? I don't think so. Okay, well, I, I've already lost two lives <laughs> by not reacting. There you go. All right. Who are so you're, I? you're third. You're okay. right there. See that you're picking your guy. Yep, okay. All so right. you're going to press the buttons to control the character. <laughs> All right. There we go. Jump. Here we go. I got it. During the 90s, Konami had a very successful string of licensed beat-em-ups, including The Simpsons, Turtles in Time, and X-Men. X-Men dropped in 1992 and was one of the top five highest grossing arcade games of that year. This cabinet came in two variations, a four player one, which we have here, and a six player version that utilized two screens. The game briefly had a home port available through the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, which released in 2010, but was delisted by 2013. It's a pretty simple game, but it's a lot of fun to play through with friends, and it features this awesome line. Welcome to die. Oh god. oh god, what are these ET monsters? These are mud men. These, oh, okay. th- these are, uh, they're, they're famous. Uh, they were in X-Men number 326. Oh, okay. Oh, it's an uh, altered beast. Definitely not the Wendigo. I, I, don't, I don't know this character. This is the Wendigo, I'm pretty sure, which is a Wolverine uh, enemy. Oh no. Oh, use the gun there. What, he had a... He had a human face under that shield. Yeah, he's a regular guy under there, it's not well, a robot. I thought they were all like sentinels. That's what I thought too, but it seems like they're actual people. Do you think it's because someone in Japan made this without reading the comics? There's a chance that that happened. Oh no, it's over. Do it, do it, is, do there do cool, do is there a cool death screen? That's kind of cool, the flaming game over. All right. All right. So do you want to go for the bank robbery, the stage holdup, the saloon showdown? Are we the, are we the good guys? No. Okay. Yes, you are. Let's are go. we? Oh, we are? Well, you're cops. Oh, we're lethal enforcers. We got to do the train. Train? I'm that guy. 
All right. Got it. Known as Lethal Enforcers 2, the Western in Japan, this game is a sequel to Lethal Enforcers. This game got ported to the Genesis, Sega CD, as well as the PlayStation, but the arcade is definitely the best version. There was also a planned Super Nintendo port, but that never materialized. This is a pretty standard light gun shooter that sees you taking on a variety of baddies in the Old West across five different stages. It's not quite as good as the original, but still worth checking out if you can find it. We lost. I think we lost. That was horrible. I think we lost. We did, we lost. We were bad at that one. That's a rough one. We lost. Was that enough footage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be my favorite character, Qui-Gon Jinn. Yep, that's a classic uh, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> that sounds like Peter Griffin. I wanna be Noob Cybot. I don't know if he's in this one. <laughs> oh my god, look at all these buttons. I've never played this on a cabinet before. Mortal Kombat was released by Midway in 1992. This is the one that started it all, and it was reportedly developed in just 10 months. Utilizing digitized sprites, the game had a very striking look that still holds up today. This game has been ported to pretty much every system imaginable, and while the formula was improved upon by the game's sequels, the original is still definitely worth experiencing, especially if you can find it in the arcade. Just real fast down on Oh god! <laughs> My defenses are impenetrable. I'm like Fort Knox over here. I'm like I'm like Jeff Foxworthy. Oh there it is. Jeff Foxworthy's career. Totally <laughs> without blemish. How's he do it? You're like lightning oh, in a god. bottle. I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. You should no! uh, how did I win again? You're better than me, clearly. What do you mean? I'm so bad at fighting games. Can you get a shot of my hand? Just um, get a shot of me playing. It'll be hilarious to everyone. He doesn't have the. He doesn't have the. Get over here. Oh! Do you have a destructo disc, dude? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just wildly. Oh! I. Oh, I'm still alive. Oh my god. Don't finish me. Oh, back, down, forward, left punch. Oh, damn it. I didn't do it fast enough. You gotta do it way faster. I died. Not good at it. These are like really cool 3D renders. Yeah. <laughs> like that, and uh, him over there, that's pretty good. <laughs> Whoever that is. Like, why are those so cool? But then, well, because these are actual, you know what I mean? Captures, I imagine, from the character screen. What? Wait, hold on, I only get axe, but you get axe and sword? I get axe and axe, it's an upside down axe. That's just because I'm the second player. That's bullshit. I want, I want both. Oh, oops. Wow, that is a, that's a, that's a stiff choice. Are you going to be the dwarf? Have to, yeah, I'm going to be the dwarf. All right, I'm going to be be Big Beefer. <laughs> you Big Beefer? I'm Big Beefer. He looks huge. Man, my joystick is rock hard. Yeah, mine is stiff as well, but that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just got to work for it. That means that you're getting a workout while uh -huh. you're playing. <laughs> oh my god, did you? Yeah! <laughs> try to try to come at me now. <laughs> me? Whoever. Oh, we can run. I can run. I can fight! I can get up there, we gotta get up there! I can't get up there. Oh, uh, he, he duped us. Released in 1989, Golden Axe is a classic side-scrolling hack and slash game from Sega. The lead designer on this one was Makoto Uchida who was also the lead designer on 1988's Altered Beast. This game kicked off a whole series of sequels and spin-offs, including the arcade exclusive Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. The big dogs are here. Oh, I threw it! I'm so strong! I'm so strong, look at me. I'm bizarrely having a hard time telling where I am. I think it's bullshit that I have the golden, the dwarf has the golden axe, but up on the, on the banner here it says golden axe, the other guy has the axe, and there's no dwarf! Matt? What do you have? Dwarf on the side? I can't. No, it's black. Dwarf's right here. <laughs> oh, never mind. He's Gilius, right there. Thunderhead. He's right there. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. so. Looks like two people as well. Well, there's two sets of joysticks, but it's one player. <laughs> that's, that's advanced. I think we're playing two players. Two up. 
Maybe. Destroy enemies underground, artillery base. That sentence flows a little rough. Holy cow. Oh, what the hell? Okay, those are grenades. Oops, just wasting our grenades. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Why is there four... Gee, cheese and rice. Oh, this is okay. wild. Why do this I have... is a really cool mechanic. So why do we have... Oh, because left, you're left or right-handed. Okay, I understand. Oh god, there's a lot of them. Uh, you can't hold the button, which is unfortunate. I'm fine with that. Heavy Barrel is a twin-stick shooter from Data East that features a unique mechanic. You have to actually rotate the joystick to aim your shots. This game was released in arcades in 1987, and got a decent NES port in 1990. The name Heavy Barrel comes from a weapon in the game. You collect six different weapon pieces to assemble the Heavy Barrel, a gun that can clear out most enemies in the game with a single shot. This is the this death I'm battle. dead! I'll never make it through. No, I'm gonna have to keep going in your honor. Oh! Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I was like, what are you supposed to be fighting? Yeah, like, okay, there we go. I like that, like, oh, oh geez, I didn't realize Oh, no, realize those, you're out. I didn't realize all That's those... That's a cool game, though. That's a very, um... I didn't realize that all those... Data advice. I didn't the, realize that all those men with guns. The would joystick hurt me. turning thing is a really cool. Uh, That's sick. That was a very cool thing that yeah. I had experienced. My wrist is. That was it. Yeah, because you have to, similar to a hand motion that Jordan is familiar, I'm familiar with, with. It. You have to like <laughs> twist it. That's really cool. That's a really innovative way to mm -hmm. get around not, you know, wanting to do that kind of game and not having maybe the hardware to do. Yeah. To. Sick. Should we play the next one? Uh huh. On to Miss Pac-Man. You gotta eat them when they're like that, Andrew. I'm you... not wasting. I'm going straight for the pucks, baby. Yeah, I have no strategy for this game, to be honest with you. Oh, you missed the cherry. Not worried about it. Who do you think I am? Uh, that jerk guy. I don't know who you're talking about. The guy who was uh, has like the Pac-Man champion, but he actually cheated. Billy. Billy Eichner. <laughs> yeah, Billy Eichner. Ah! You're thinking of Billy Mitchell. When Billy I'm Mitchell. Donkey Kong. <laughs> I forgot it was Donkey Kong. Oh, what, you're what killing am I, it. What am I like, Billy Mitch? Am I the Billy Mitchell of Miss Pac Man? Ready? Buy my hot sauce, please. Released in 2001, Miss Pac Man and Galaga, class of 1981, is a cabinet that features both Miss Pac Man and Galaga. Despite the title, Miss Pac Man was officially released in 1982. The game started out as an unofficial mod for Pac Man called Crazy Auto, but was eventually adapted into Miss Pac Man. Galaga is a sequel to 1979's Galaxian, and was the sixth highest grossing arcade game in Japan back in 1981. Okay, let's go! Oh, dude, I thought you were playing Pac-Man, uh, Miss Pac-Man, and I was playing Galaga. It just switched over to Galaga, I don't know what Man. to tell you. The universe decided. I have always loved this game a little bit. Like, this you... and Centipede are two, like, classics. I was uh, more of a Bosconian fan, actually. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's but, a... Uh... It's a Space Invaders, well not a Space Invaders style game, it's a space shooting game that came out a while after this that I think is really good. Number of hits, 27. Jordan took 27 hits before we started doing this today. Your GD and he right. still got a bonus of 2,700. Jordan's uh, has stage... <laughs> Jason, Jordan. oh! Jordan's in late stage Galaga. Oh, you it's blew over. It. Put it in the ramekin. <laughs> Now, this is a favorite of mine from back in the day, for sure. I used the to, whole Marvel series, like Capcom to, uh, series, all of these are so good. Yeah, I had the Marvel for... Oh my goodness, I've never seen Omega Red in, a, in any game ever before. Uh, I like being Spider-Man. I usually like being the Hulk. Uh, I kind of want to be a bit... No, I'll be the Hulk. I'm so excited. I used to love Marvel vs. Capcom on, on the uh, Dreamcast. I used to have it. Yes, I, I did too. Released in 1997, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter is a sequel to 1996's X-Men vs. Street Fighter. The game has each player select two fighters to compete in a tag team competition. There have been a number of games in the Marvel vs. Capcom series, and this is a pretty solid entry. This game introduced the Variable Assist, which allowed players to call in their second fighter to perform a special assist move, and this became a staple of the Marvel vs. Capcom series. Oh! So close! Hulk and Wolverine are, they're a dynamic duo that can't be beaten. They're the two, they, they can only beat each other, you know? I beat the thing, you are no thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey there. Can I continue? No, oh. you can if you put in another quarter. Oh, I refuse. Come on, Wolverine, give me a hand here. Oh, I threw him. 
I'm just beating the shit out of Blackheart here. Oh. You're really not doing much here, buddy. Matt, how's he doing? Uh, I'm not paying attention. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I guess now that I'm paying attention, he's not doing very well. I'm doing way better. Are you? Are, yeah, I'm Oh, I thought beating... this was your health bar. No, I'm beating the shit out of him. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Oh, God. Oh, I'm gonna... No! No! You got me. <laughs> I made it do that to you. Was he satisfying to watch me get murked? Yeah. Wow, that's a good face. That is a pin. <laughs> they, did, they did the continue. That's the one that you're always trying to reference. Continue? It's from this. I didn't know that. Did you hear it? No. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh. I didn't hit hard enough. Great. Okay, don't hit me though, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, you'll know it's thing? me because I'm in bright orange. I see that. I just I didn't realize that, that was a. I could hurt you. Oh, you didn't realize. <laughs> oh, that's convenient. Back in 1989, Final Fight was shown at trade shows as Street Fighter 89, a sequel to 1987 Street Fighter. However, this title was eventually changed to Final Fight, as it really had nothing to do with Street Fighter. The real Street Fighter 2 would come out in 1991 and would propel forward the fighting game craze of the 90s. Final Fight, on the other hand, is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that was reportedly the highest grossing arcade game in Japan in 1990. Even though it's not an official Street Fighter sequel, the game still has a number of Street Fighter-related references and Easter eggs. And characters from the two series continue to cross over to this very day. Final Fight also features some references to other Capcom games. The villains in the game are the Mad Gear Gang, a name taken from 1987's Mad Gear. And this character, 2P, is actually the second player character from 1988's Forgotten Worlds. I'm oh, I'm dead. No! You got the Andre the Giant ripoff? Putting in my name. I'm doing pretty good against this whole crew. Oh, this, this is a great game over screen. Oh no. No, 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 he says no, 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 please. Is this like a repro thing? This looks too good. <laughs> it looks pretty crisp. You're gonna blow up? You're gonna blow up, Matt. You guys want the inside track on tomorrow's special burger? Yeah. Sure, yeah, for sure. It's, Dude. it's the big kahuna. Okay. So it's teriyaki mayo, onions, oh, wow. and cheese, and pineapple. Hell yeah. Thank you, so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. We appreciate honest, it. Honest feedback, please. Yeah, absolutely. I'm holding a big, expensive camera. Espresso camera. That's really good. Honest feedback, yeah. that's really good. <laughs> It's extremely satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the sweet savory is like yeah. spot on. Yeah. Critical. And one more. Boom. Great here. I'd like to play uh, Maximum Force. Let's play Maximum Force. Let's give it a go. I played enough Area 51. Let's start from the beginning. All right. <coughs> Please don't cough. <laughs> Area 51 was released by Atari in 1995. It was a huge hit with arcade goers, and in 1997, it was followed up by Maximum Force, which used the same arcade board as Area 51. In 1998, these two games were combined into the Area 51 Maximum Force duo cabinet. At the time, both of these games were seen by critics as being a bit dated with their digitized graphics and pre-rendered 3D levels and objects. Arcades were being dominated by games with polygonal graphics, like Virtua Cop 2. Despite this, these games both did pretty well in the arcades. Is there just a dead zone right there? Because I, I can't hit that one. Oh god. Oh. Do we both get 30? We both got exactly 30 hits. That's pretty impressive. I'm sorry, I coughed. I told you not to. No, no, no so rude. <laughs> Is that a bad guy? Are those terrorists? No, no, those are good guys. Blue means good. But he's, there. he's your friend. He's. No, uh, I know he's. I know he's big. Uh, yeah, he's really big. There's nothing over there. There's ammo. I didn't see it. Ammo boxes. Light bulb stuff. 
crazy. This is incredibly oh, accurate. Oh, you shot, shot him! He's a member of Star. You got him. You just keep <laughs> killing the. Somehow I died. Good thing I'm the best at this game. <laughs> Matt, are you seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were giving him a finger. <laughs> like, yeah, That's we're it. gamers. Now, famously, uh, Matt Hall and I, back in the, uh, that even, may have even been, got a hit A. I swear to God, I did. Uh, I think it was uh, before Hidden Machine, when we were just on my channel doing Game or Pass, we played a uh, port of Metal Slug. Uh, for the on Game Pass, and it was uh, one of the worst games I've ever played. Yeah, I used to play a, a Flash game that was called like Iron Slug or something like that. You know what I mean? And it was basically this. It was very fun. What the shit? Metal Slug is a 1996 run-and-gun title developed by Nazca and published by SNK for the Neo Geo MVS. The game is considered to be a spiritual successor to 1994's Gun Force 2, and was developed by many of the same people who worked on that game. Metal Slug was a huge hit and eventually saw six sequels, a remake, and four spin-off games. I'm dominating. You're almost dead. I've got one life. Oh, good lord, There's I cabbages. Thought that, I thought those were grenades. I think they're avocados. On. Let's go, baby. Shoot at him. Oh, there we go. What the fuck? Huh? How's the camel work? I lost. Uh, ever play this game before? I've never played this game before. Have you ever played a game exactly like it under a different name? Yeah, many. I played them on the, uh, the iOS app store when I got my, with every iPod or iPhone I've ever had. Is this the OG? Is this the original? I don't think so. 1994's Bust a Move was called Puzzle Bobble in Japan and features Bub and Bob as well as many other characters and elements from 1986's Bubble Bobble. We're not sure why the name was changed, but the gameplay remains the same across all versions. Like the poster says, you aim at bubbles of the same color and shoot. This game was a huge success, even being listed as one of the most popular Japanese arcade boards of all time back in 1995. It spawned countless imitators like 1996's Snood, but this game is the true originator. I've never played this. No, uh, you can move up and down. I can't move. Oh, but I can only go so far. Yes. So I've only played this on Atari. Okay. And it was it was a lot different. Yeah. You want to watch out for the spiders. They're the big ones. Obviously, the centipede is pretty important. So I'm supposed to shoot the centipede. Yes. Yeah, so you can shoot the mushrooms too, but that's but like the mushrooms help me keep him at bay. No, because really, what happens is every time he hits a mushroom, he goes down another level. Oh, you know I didn't what know I mean? that. Yep. So, if anything, you could be big brain about it. Oh, God. Oh, another thing. Uh, I can't, I you can't pressing it doesn't uh, change the speed of how fast it's shooting. You can just hold it down. Oh, I didn't know that. Developed and published by Atari, 1981's Centipede has you using a trackball to control the bug blaster and take out the titular Centipede. This was one of the most popular and highest grossing games in the early 80s arcade boom and was one of the first arcade games with a significant female player base. Centipede was programmed by Donna Bailey, who was one of the few women in America who had assembly language experience at the time. The game features a striking pastel color palette that was uncommon at the time, which was reportedly at first an unintentional choice that Bailey decided to keep. <laughs> it's like, a, you know those, uh, the, they're called like sounding balls? Or medicine balls and little metal balls. And I, I have in a your sounding hand. rod. Is that similar? It's well, yeah. I mean, it's usually that's attached to the sounding balls. But I mean, really, if you want to, you've got both right at home. What? Oh no! I I brought shame upon our channel. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is the original Donkey Kong. No, it's not. No. It's, it's the original sequel. Oh, okay. DK Jr.? Look at Mario for Papa. Good job, Matt. Uh, I forgot you had to jump. 
Got it? Yeah. It'll flip. So okay. once, it's, once he's done, it'll be your turn. Oh, okay, cool. This is wild. Yeah, so the screen flips on those. Oh, okay, so this old I, I used to love this game. I just fucked that up so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Do I rotate it or? Yeah, it, oh, okay. that, that controls your movement. You this is cool. Like this? I would, I would, you can pull back a little bit, I don't know. Whatever looks good, you know. You're, oh! <laughs> it's hard for me to give feedback because we're not seeing the image. Riveting gameplay. No, I'm fucking up again. Arkanoid is a 1986 block-breaking game, which is sort of a reinterpretation of 1976's Breakout. Both games use a dial controller, similar to the old paddles used for the Atari 2600. In Arkanoid, you control a little spaceship called the Voss. Essentially, you just bounce a ball back and forth against a wall of blocks, with your goal being to clear all of the blocks from the screen. You get various power-ups along the way, and will face different obstacles like enemy ships. On the final stage, you face a boss called Doe, who would go on to reappear in 1987's Revenge of Doe and 1997's Doe It Again. So make sure you just kill the, uh, the futuristic road cones. Yep. I see the, the little twisty pyramid duders. Oh god, it's the pace. We're picking up the pace here now. Oh! We both finished strong. I was happy with that. I finished very strong. You always do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Volume and Wait distance more. are two things I uh, really pride myself on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with that, our video is concluded on the local barcade. We had a really good time. It was really cool. Very, we we're very appreciative of them for letting us come inside of the place that they own, inside of their hearts and bodies and minds. And uh, sincerely, it was a really good time. And uh, now we go to Jordan for all the things that you need to do. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you want to, just scroll down below. Like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, if there's other videos. Click on those. Watch those, too. Tell your friends about us, right? That's yeah, what we want them to do. Word of mouth. Word, word of mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> and another word from this mouth. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's good enough for me. I'm going to say